Hey guys, what's up? Evan from Stock Music Musician, and today I've got my first Reason 10 Europa tutorial. Um, this is going to be really a high level tutorial. What I really want to just talk about is sort of what each part of Europa is doing. Um, that's going to be the first section. The second section is going to focus on why or when you might want to go to Europa, at least starting out. And the third section is going to be focused uh, more on how you can get better at Europa or any other instrument. Um, so Propellerheads has already made sort of a detailed uh, couple of videos on the specifics of Europa, but what I want to start out doing really instead is going and looking at on a high level what each section is doing and why. And the first and easiest place to look for this is actually to flip it over, hit the tab key, um, and we look at the back of the rack, and you've actually got a chart here that shows you, or a graph, a graph that shows you, maybe a graph, I don't know, um, a graphic representation of it. So basically this implies that engines one, two, and three all use the same um, signal flow, which then all three of these channels go to the mixer, and they can either go to the filter or bypass it and go straight to the amp, and they go to the multi-effect. Um, and so the engines, you've got the wave section, the spectral filter section, and the unison. And the wave can be affected by mods one and two. The harmonics can be affected, or, and the harmonics can modulate the spectral filter. So what does that mean in practice? Well, you've got your three engines, one, two, three, here. And you can turn them on or off individually. Then you've got the sections for each. You've got the wave, which pretty much I think needs to be on. And then, so this will be the waveform, um, and you can choose what octave, what shape it is, um, and what's affecting it. Then you've got the modifier, which will affect, we'll just use, so you can modify that wave in two different ways. Uh, this is the f style of th that it's being modified by, down sampling, synced, harmonics, um, and you can have two of these, and this is the amount of each modification. And this chooses what actually creates the modifier. For example, right now LFO1 is selected with 0%, but if you put it up, then you'll see it actually modulating in time to LFO1. And if we slow LFO1 down, then that also slows down. Or if we do it to um, the mod wheel, um, so as we move the mod wheel, it changes. And, you know, this will be affected by the amount. And so you can have two of these parameters affecting the shape of the waveform. And then, and this was not initially apparent to me, but the spectral filter and the unison also only apply individually to each uh, engine here. So spectral filter one, this sort of filters out whether it's a high pass filter, you can see there, it's just much more complicated high pass and low pass filters than we're used to. Um, and then you can, you know, similarly add the LFO to it um, and harmonic or various um, sort of shapings of it. Um, so. so this is unique to each engine and then also the unison, which basically is like a chorus or creates a double. Um, and so then if you were to go, we'll just put this, we'll put some extreme settings on and you'll see um, it's also harmony. Um, if we go to engine two, they're going to be completely different. So it's really important to realize that you've got to do these for each uh, wave or for each engine that you select. Then from here, from after the unison, it goes over to this section here, which is basically a mixer. And these are the levels of each one of the engines, and this is their pan. So, um, you know, this will just be something sort of extreme. It'll be like, and then we can, you know, flip it around. So if you're listening on headphones, you can hear um, whether or not that's occurring. Then they will go into the filter if you put, if you select the box. But if this box isn't selected, then each individual engine will bypass the filter. Um, and so these are, you know, your standard high pass, low pass ladder, and I guess maybe single variable, multi-variable, I don't really know. Also, option for drive, and again, these can be 
controlled. Um, and then from there it goes to your amp, your standard amplitude, ADSR curve, where you can make it more pad-like. And then actually, and this is interesting, this whole envelope, LFO, these sections here do not actually directly affect the sound. So the envelope, LFO, and mod matrix don't directly affect the sound. It then I believe actually goes down to the effect section based on this chart. It goes from the amp to the multi-effect down here. So master volume is probably part of the amp. And then you've got the ability to turn the effects on or off, and you've got reverb, delay, distortion, compression, a phaser, and an EQ. And you actually have the ability to turn these on or off individually, and then also drag them around to change the order of the effects, which is awesome. Um, the section on the left here is sort of the performance section. So this will control the range of a pitch bend, whether it's, or, you know, it can be much more extreme. Um, and then your mod wheel and your portamento, whether it's, uh, and then also whether it's poly, polyphonic or retriggered or legato. Um, and then here you've got basically a bunch of envelope curves which you can use to modulate the sections here or through the um, matrix. And similarly with the LFOs. And you can also send, um, so let's, I mean, you can do some really advanced curve shapes. Um, like this would be great if you could do it this easily on the sequencer. But um, you can do these really advanced curve shapes, beat sync, um, have them key triggered or not. And then you can actually send these out with CV voltage. Uh, so you would go like, this is envelope one, and its destination would be to CV output one. Um, and so now you could flip it over and have that curve modulate another instrument, for example. So this is also a really easy way. It's like Synchronous has a bunch of great curves, but you can actually get curves pretty easily in Europa. And I know a lot of people had been um, talking about whether or not Synchronous was key synced. Synchronous is not key synced, but you can get the same cool curves um, through Europa. Uh, and I believe also through Grain by clicking uh, loop and then key triggered. Um, and so now it would always start at the beginning whenever you hit a key. Um, and then you can have a beat synced. Um, so that's part one of Europa, like the high level overview. Um, so I'm going to take a quick moment to pause and say that I've now put a channel on Patreon um, because frankly YouTube just doesn't really pay the bills very well. Um, and really I want to make higher quality videos. As you've noticed, um, I'm not good at video editing or any of that. So really the main reason I want to get on Patreon is so that I can actually hire video editors to put this together and make better videos. But I'm also going to do a bunch of um, exclusive content there for just like really reasonable prices. There'll be exclusive videos, there'll be project files you can download, samples, and then even one-on-one -on -one classes. So there's a link down below if you want to jump on Patreon and help support the channel and then making a better and more content. Okay, so now the second thing I said I'd talk about with Europa is when I would grab it. Um, you know, we're still, st I'm still totally exploring this like you guys are. But I think, nonetheless, there's a good, you know, place to be starting out with it as we start to figure out how we're going to use it. I think with leads and melodies, it's going to be doing great. Um, having explored these, it's great for that. It's great for synth-based sounds. Uh, it just does that really well. Some of the textures and movements are really good. Um, but others are, um, I think, almost too rich. If they're going to stand by themselves in sparser arrangements, they're great. But I think there's still totally a place for Thor, um, you know. I, I think, I actually, honestly, almost all the legacy synths sort of have their space because Europa, uh, <laughs> this is going to sort of sound... The opposite of things, but if you make a song full of Europa synths, it becomes 
almost too rich. You have to become much more aggressive with your EQ and your song choice because all of the patches are so full. And so really, I think what you want to do is either have your main support and like vibe coming from Europa and then stick, you know, to the more traditional instruments like the uh, Thor, the Subtractor, the Maelstrom, even the NNXT or something um, for like the support for the bat for the leads or vice versa but if you make a song all in europa then you've got to be really careful when you've got all these super complicated rich synths just sort of overlapping with each other and you almost get this mush so i think europa probably will be in most of my hip-hop and um edm tracks and also like some idm stuff but in that case it'll be more pad based but i don't see it at least at first being my go-to synth for every single thing like it might have better sounding basses than a subtractor but if you have like a europa bass a europa lead some europa chords then you get to the situation where really um it does seem overly just overly loud i guess or not distinct enough i think is the better way of putting it so as you're trying to think about where you want to use your Europa in your mix, I think those are some really good places to start for the chords, for the pads, for the bass, and for the lead, but not for all of them. Um, and especially also, I think with grain, I would say the same thing sort of about grain, and I'll do a video about grain later, um, but that if you stack a bunch of Europas and grains in your song, you start very quickly having too much um, content, really, too much harmonic content. So that would be my big, big takeaway about where you want to think about using it. Finally, the third point that I wanted to make in this video was, well, how do you learn how to use it? How do we go about learning how to use it? Um, and I think presets are the best way to do that. So you'd start with a bass preset, like double bass. Um, let's just close this one out. And what you do is just find a preset you like. And what you, well, that's not one that I like, but anyway. So you find a preset and then you figure out why does it do that, right? What part of it is making that sound? So like you would turn off the first engine, for example, and sort of reduce it to its elements and see what is adding what. So that's what engine one sounds like. And now let's only turn on engine two. So engine two is much higher um, than engine one. So that's like one thing you'd realize. And then you'd go here and you see this being modulated. So it's because envelope one, which already has a crazy curve, is modulating this a lot with a formant sweep. Okay, right, well, how much are the, are the modifiers contributing to that sound? Well, turn those off. All right, how much is this, you know? And all right, so you can hear the phase distort being done by LFO1 is adding a lot to it. Um, and then you, you can hear how much the specter filter, spectral filter. So it's... Uh, that's really how I recommend going on. And you probably want to do a lot of different sounds, right? You deconstruct these patches. So you already hear this one has a fifth in it. So is the fifth being done from tuning? Well, this one's tuned to zero. This one's tuned to zero. And this one's tuned to zero. But the unison is on a fifth. So already, um, you can see that that's a different way of approaching it. Whereas in the past, you might have actually tuned some of the octaves separately. I mean, some of the oscillators to be, you know, up a fifth or a twelfth. Well, not a twelfth, that's an octave. Um, but now we've got the unison on, so that doesn't work. So basically, uh, the underlying thing there that I want to get to is as you get these new instruments, what you really want to do is focus on deconstructing patches and presets that you like, modifying them to sound more like what you want. And in the process of doing that, 
you're going to get much better at sound design. Um, when I first started playing with Reason, like in 2002 or 2003, YouTube didn't exist. <laughs> you know, it was just, it was basically either start from scratch and my synths always sounded awful or try to reverse engineer uh, certain subtractor and Maelstrom patches. Um, and over time you get better at it. So I would encourage you to be very creative with these and work backwards. I hope this was enjoyable. Um, and please do check out the Patreon page because it will enable me to make more and better videos. Um, and also you'll be able to unlock special Patreon